It is Friday, February 16th, 2020. It is 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so you know what time it is. It's time for a little bit of coin metal. It was a very fun get your ass kicked at Jiu-Jitsu Friday. Um, I, I've been trying to think of what we were covering today. I Honestly, I, I was just so satisfied with myself from the last sparring session that we, we had and... Um, <coughs> Yeah, I had a lot of fun, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was just I I was fairly graceful, and I I kept my opponent in check pretty much pretty much the whole time. Um, I don't think he he really had a point where you know he had me lined up for an arm bar or lined up for a choke where I wasn't able to circumvent him relatively easily. I was really going for low 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 energy. You know, so like at one point he was getting me around to the back, you know, he was getting around to my back and I was kind of letting him, right? And so as soon as I could, as soon as he was trying to get get on my back, so, you know, he had one hook in and while he's trying to get the other hook, I put my hand on the inside of his ankle and then I pushed my, I straightened out my leg and kind of shifted out from that and then I quickly put my hip right up onto his his uh, ankle there and so he wasn't able to maintain that and I came around to a side control position and I ended up getting him somehow or another right I can't remember the stuff that I actually got him on except for one thing I got him on a uh, I got him on a arm triangle I know for sure I got him an arm triangle. I'm trying to think of what else I got him on because it seemed like I I submitted him like three times. Oh, I think I had one position where he he had his his both of his hooks in, but he made the stupid mistake of crossing his legs, and so I triangled his feet, and that that was that was pretty slick. Um, so that was two. And I'm, I'm trying to remember the the other thing that I got him on. I could have swore it was it was probably a Kimura or a Americana, or it seems like it was. It, it wasn't a dorsal one. I think it was from Mount. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a it was a really good rolling session. And like I said, I was just I was so satisfied with myself from that because I I gotta say from from all of my jujitsu that I've been doing, it's it's been feeling probably the sharpest and and le- least energy intensive over the last like probably I want to say about a week or so. You know, I've been trying to really stretch out my leg and really get my hip back into shape. I mean, ah. You know, it's like I, I've been buried under a whole bunch of shit, and plus I, I've been trading a little bit more. I can't say that I've been terribly successful, but I, I'm still kicking above treading water, and that's that's all that matters. Is that every once in a while I get a good trade that hits, and yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so yeah, I, I haven't been as active as I would really like to. Plus, it's kind of cold outside, so getting over to do jujitsu. I've gotten in three times this week. I went in twice um, during the morning sessions, and those were tough. Um, I almost went into the Friday, the Friday session this morning because, for some reason, I managed to stay up really, 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 really early, <laughs> and uh, it was only like an hour or two more to wait until I'd I'd be going to jujitsu. So it's like, hmm, should I go? And I, I had decided not to. You know, just because the the morning classes tend to be a little bit smaller, and while I tend to get in a lot of reps, and that, that's one of the things I really like about it. Uh, nonetheless, I, I wanted to uh, get in and in and do a little bit of uh, do a little bit of grappling with more people. You know, and and so I mean, today I, I worked with like ooh, probably three, maybe four, pe- four, four or five different people actually. So. You know, it's it was just a it's a little more social for that reason, um, but I don't know. I I like the balance, you know, where I think if I go in twice on the morning classes a week and then once on the evening class, at least once on the evening class uh, during the week and then one weekend class, that uh, I'll start getting to where I I feel a lot more comfortable. You know, the the hip is still really bugging me. 
in uh, my hand. It's like from my hip all the way down to my knee, damn near. But it's getting better, you know. And I I've been stretching it out. I got to start doing some straight kicks, um, or it's like a swinging kind of kick, like a I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, I I used to do them quite a bit to help loosen up my hips, and, and it works. It works. You know, just to uh, get the old blood flowing. Um, but it is something that I need to do because I, I intend to fully recover from this thing and get back to full kick ass. Although I, I, I was a little explosive today. I, I, but like I said, I tried to minimize the amount of strength um, that I was applying to my opponent and, and really trying to use his energy more than mine. And, and it seemed to work pretty well. You know, I was I was able to get my hands ahead of his hips a couple of times when it started becoming an issue, um, you know, that he was able to, like, shrimp and get up on his side and whatnot. If you get your hand in front of their hips, then they can't rotate into you. And it's a little trick that I learned. Anywho, let's go ahead and get into some music. And uh, as far as where we're going to go... I don't think I've played this in a little while. Kind of been breaking it up. Ski Mask Way, first dance, here on Coin Metal. And that was Crowbar with Conquering. So, as far as what we're going to get into today, oh man, I love this song too. I should have let it play, but I didn't. I'm just going to turn it up just a little bit. I hope it doesn't get too loud. There we go. A little bit of Vola going on in the background there. Good stuff. I intend to be looking more into their stuff. They've they've got quite a bit of a, uh, a catalog out there. It seems to me they have at least three or four albums. And uh, this is just their latest one. Good song, though. Anyway, as far as what we're going to get into today, I wanted to start off on a little bit of a light foot because we're going to get kind of deep into it today. And uh, I caught this one the other day and, and just made me laugh because this guy has been a really interesting addition to uh, to the crypto celebrity group. I mean, I, um, for one thing, he seems, out of all of them that have come into the crypto space, celebrities that is, to be probably the most competent and capable of understanding exactly what he's talking about and so you know I, I just I find it really interesting that he would have anything to say about cryptocurrencies but the fact that he does and and from what he says seems like he understands what he's talking about it's very very interesting Mr. Captain Kirk none other than William Shatner doubts Craig Wright's claims to inventing Bitcoin and this is by Adrian uh, Zmud, Zmudzinski. And uh, let's see. I need to double click here. I'm going to check and verify something. Uh, yes. Penis. All right. Get back to work here. <clears throat> Captain Kirk seems unconvinced that the Australian computer scientist Craig Wright is the inventor of Bitcoin. William Shatner, the Canadian actor that played Captain Kirk in the original Star Trek series, suggested that Wright is not behind the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto, the seminal cryptocurrencies creator. In a tweet on February 11th, Shatner said, quote, Ask yourself, why would someone claim to be Satoshi and offer zero proof? Either put up or shut up, right? The discussion started after a Twitter user answered Shatner's announcement of having been at a cryptocurrency event by expressing the hope that, quote, fake Satoshi wasn't there. After clarifying that this was a reference to Craig Wright, another Twitter user claimed Wright is indeed Satoshi and that Bitcoin SV is the real Bitcoin. To which Shatner answered, quote, Why can't he prove it? From what I have read is that some mysterious bond courier would deliver the keys, which 
honestly is a scene right out of the Back to the Future. If he is, he should be able to prove it. This is like the modern day search for Anastasia. Yeah. <clears throat> In his tweet, Shatner was referring to the Tulip Trust, which purportedly contains the private keys to a million Bitcoin worth $9.7 billion as of press time. That Wright claims to be hand, hand, claims will be handed to him by a courier. In late January, Wright, Wright told Cointelegraph that he is confident that he will gain access to the funds in question billions in Bitcoin at stake. Wright has been wrapped up in legal proceedings brought against him by the estate of David Kleeman, an American computer scientist. The two sides are litigating over Wright's alleged misappropriation of over 1 million Bitcoin that he and David mined together from 2009 to 2013. Wright claims to be Satoshi Nakamoto, but in November, he told the plaintiff that he could not afford a 500,000 Bitcoin, <clears throat> nearly $4.9 billion settlement in the case that the Kleeman estate initiated against him. Earlier this month, he was accused of abusing attorney-client privilege to withhold documents and confuse trial proceedings. Yeah, I'm still convinced that he's going to end up getting himself sentenced to the most years that anybody has ever been sentenced to for, uh, uh, what's, that, uh, what's that term? Contempt of court. That's it. Yeah, uh, I think he's going to end up talking himself into a serious prison sentence if he hasn't already. Um there's a reason why Satoshi Nakamoto exists in people's mind. It's because somebody used a pseudonym. That's not somebody's real name. Satoshi Nakamoto is not some real name, right? Somebody made up that name and used it when they created Bitcoin or worked and worked on Bitcoin. And so the, the point is, is that they, they did this for a very, very specific reason. It's because if there was ever a time when he was directly associated with the creation of Bitcoin, and especially in the initial time period, like from, from like, I would say 2009 to 2011, like as soon as Bitcoin achieved a real market price, you know, for, if for real goods and services in, in, in the world um, that are valued in U.S. dollars, as soon as that happened, he would have been hunted down. Every government on the planet would be wanting to get a hold of him because he had destroyed the Federal Reserve, the central bank's monetary monopoly on this planet. <clears throat> and so, you know... It's, uh, being somebody like that, I mean, people have been killed for way less, way less. So you know, I mean, it's it's silly to claim to be Satoshi Nakamoto on a number of points, but so he did, right? And he didn't try to tell anybody, no, I'm not Satoshi Nakamoto. He pretty much claimed it. And the problem with that is that. He's been trying to ride that line in between we don't know and we know for sure. Because if we ever if we ever like cross that line 100%, he's going to be facing criminal and civil penalties one way or the other. Because I could guarantee you the only reason he is still in anybody's mind is because he told a lot of people that had a lot of money that yes, I'm Satoshi Nakamoto, and yes, I'm working on delivering or freeing up 500,000 or 1 million Bitcoin. I, I have possession of the keys for 1 million Bitcoin. And that, that's the proof. That's the, the standard of proof that he is, in fact, Satoshi Nakamoto. is the ability to move those coins. 
and he has thus far demonstrated zero capability to do so. Now, where it is important with regard to the David Kleeman issue <clears throat> is that supposedly, and this is just my understanding of it, it could be different, I'm not going to assume any blame if it is, but supposedly how it breaks down is this, is that Kleeman and, and Wright did work together on mining. They did mine Bitcoin. They mined a significant amount of Bitcoin. And they were put on hard drives and encrypted. And before he died, Craig stole those hard drives from Ira. Actually, it's Ira Kleeman. Is the I, I, is it? No, it's David. My apologies. I get confused between the two brothers because Ira is the one chasing after him now for the the money. He at least wants half of the fucking money that David and Craig mined. And so far, he is, he has failed to provide any evidence that he actually has those coins. And so, I, I don't even think that qualifies, really. You know, um, because the, the initial one million coins, I, I think they were like, I, I want to I say they were like kind of pre-mined, cause, or primarily pre-mined, because Satoshi was one of the first miners out there, right? But because of that, he, he logged up quite a few of them. Anyway, so... He supposedly has access to these funds, and he's been telling investors that he does have access to these funds. Now, I can't prove that conclusively, but I could almost guarantee that is why Calvin Ayer has any association with him whatsoever. It's because there's this hope that he, he really has the hard drives that have the keys on him, and he's working on cracking the encryption, and eventually he's going to be able to give... Calvin a significant amount of those Bitcoin. He's probably promised them all away. He's probably been living on credit from the the promises he's made concerning those coins this whole time. And so th that's where the the civil penalties come in, into play. If he if he proves that he is Satoshi, he has to pay out. And if he tries to avoid paying out, he's going to end up going to court. If it's proven that he isn't Satoshi, <laughs> he's, he's going to get taken to court by all those rich people whose dime he's been living on and bilking them of for the last like three or four years now. Uh, yeah, he's going to get ass rained one way or another. And so... It's, it's been a dangerous and stupid game that he's been playing this entire time. And, and I've just been shaking my head. I'm like, why? Why would anybody be so fucking stupid as to subject themselves to something like that? You have the option. You know, Craig had the option. He could have denied it. He could have said, no. Are you fucking kidding me? No, I'm not Satoshi Nakamoto. I just really know this tech. I really like this tech. I really know this tech. And if you follow what I tell you about this tech, we might be able to make a shit ton of money. That's as much as he had to say. But no, no, no. I'm Satoshi Nakamoto. I made all this shit. It's not meant for hobbyists. Fuck off. got to be fucking kidding me. It's like, dude, you know, and, and one way or another, if it is ever resolved, one way or another, conclusively, one way or another, he's completely fucked. It might not ever even get that far. It might just get to the point where he's obviously no use to anybody, or at least to the people that he, he promised a shit ton of money to, and, and that's that. You know, they'll end up finding him suicided in his fucking jail cell or something like that. You know. I can only hope that this entire time he's been mining BSV and selling on the peaks. And has been paying off his fucking creditors beforehand. Because 
if he ends up going to prison before he's paid off with people and cannot fulfill, he's fucking doomed. And you, yeah, you heard it here. Anyway, so I do have additional stuff. I didn't want to fully get into this thing, but <clears throat> it does kind of exemplify um, at least the the essence of what I want to cover tonight. And uh, this latest thing is is related loosely, and you know I'll leave it to you after the, after I like title this and write up a little synopsis of exactly what we're trying to get through today. I think it'll become clear. Anyway, this is on uh, CryptoIQ.co. IOTA Doomsday. Wallet compromised. Network turned off via centralized kill switch while the co-founders fight over the over 65 million coins stolen from early investors. And this is authored on uh, February 14th by Crypto.IQ. Um, no indication of genitalia. <clears throat> the War on Shitcoins episode 20, IOTA, MIOTA. The War on Shitcoins is a Crypto.IQ series that targets and shoots down cryptocurrencies that are not worth investing in, either due to being scams, having serious design flaws being centralized, or in general just being worthless copies of other cryptocurrencies. There are thousands of shitcoins that are de detrimental to the crypto space, and Crypto.IQ intends to expose all of them. The crypto space needs an exorcism, and we are happy to provide it. You know, dude, if you're really serious about that, you have only to look at stable coins. Not a single one of them has ever had an audit. Chew on that. Continuing on. Despite having solid potential, not really, IOTA appears to be having a complete meltdown, with a convergence of negative factors such as their native wallet being compromised, the network being shut down with a centralized kill switch, and the co-founders fighting with each other over 65 million IOTA that were apparently taken from early investors who supposedly did not claim their coins as as will be deep dived in this article. <clears throat> IOTA is one of the more unique cryptocurrencies since it is the top cryptocurrency that uses directed analytic, uh, I'm sorry, acyclic graph, DAG, technology. Essentially, IOTA transactions can be sent by referencing two previous transactions with a low intensity proof of work that can be done on any computer. This, unlike Bitcoin, which requires a complete copy of the entire blockchain history in order to send a transaction as well as a global network of powerful mining machines to confirm transactions. Actually, that's not necessarily true. It's just that that's the state of the network at this moment. This makes IOTA ideal for storing data particularly large real-time data sets that are generated by Internet of Things devices such as weather stations, traffic flow monitors, etc. Indeed, IOTA is where, blockchain, where the blockchain, crypto, and IoT sectors overlap, and the combinations of these technologies have the potential to produce powerful and useful results. This is why IOTA had a $1 billion market cap as recently as early February. However, recent events have revealed that IOTA is, in, is extremely centralized. And, as of this writing, the IOTA network has been down for nearly two days after the IOTA Foundation flipped its centralized kill switch called the Coordinator. <clears throat> All, tra <clears throat> All transactions must be referenced by the coordinator in order to be confirmed. The reasoning behind the coordinator's existence is that an attacker who controls the majority of hash rate on the IOTA network could double spend and split the network, so the coordinator is a failsafe to stop that sort of scenario. However, 
The coordinator causes the IOTA network to be completely centralized. The IOTA Foundation could stop the network completely, like the current situation, give certain transactions priority, ignore certain transactions, and the coordinator is the central point of failure since it is taken over or stops working, the entire IOTA network would stop functioning. Therefore, the IOTA network is unacceptably centralized. The IOTA Foundation publicly announced how their coordinator would be removed in late 2018 in order to achieve decentralization. But that obviously never happened since it is not the year 2020. Oh, it is not the year 2020 and the coordinator has just been used to literally turn off the IOTA network. It should say this is year 2020 and the coordinator has just been used to literally turn off the IOTA network. Yep. The reason that the IOTA Foundation chose to hit the coordinator kill switch is that their native wallet software, the Trinity Wallet, has been compromised. Details continue to be sparse, but what is known is, at this point is that the wallet seeds had been stolen, resulting in the theft of at least $1.6 million worth of IOTA. Oh, let's see here. About 1.6 million USD worth of IOTA have been stolen from 10 high value accounts. Bug is likely in the official desktop wallet. Network completely stopped for nearly 24 hours now. IOTA Strong just keeps giving. And there's some sort of reference there, but it's too fucking tiny for me. Basically, IOTA's wallet software appears to be cryptographically insecure, and the IOTA Foundation turned off the entire network so the attacker couldn't drain any additional wallets. Notably, just over two months ago, the IOTA network was shut down via the coordinator due to a possible attack. Collectively, these incidents make it seem like IOTA is plagued with problems. The fact that IOTA's coordinator can be used to shut down the network, ignore certain transactions, and represents a single point of failure is exacerbated by the infighting between IOTA co-founders David Sonstebo and Sergey Ivan... Ivan... Ch <clears throat> Ivan Cheglo, aka Come From Beyond CFB. Um, Come From Beyond says, I notified the IOTA community that I no longer work with Dave, David Sonstebo, Sonsteb and I am contacting my lawyers to get my 25 TI from him. He refuses to transfer the, the IOTAs to make, to, me, or to make me act for his own benefit against mine. CFB claims that the IOTA Foundation owes him 25 million IOTA, worth approximately $8 million. Sunstebo replied with a long letter that sidesteps the money issue and talks about how he and CFB disagreed on a solution to get rid of the coordinator. Sunstebo alleges that it is CFB's fault that the coordinator was not removed because CFB had had completely different plans to get rid of the coordinator and sharply reject the IOTA Foundation's plans. Zooming out, it seems the fight over removing the coordinator and turning IOTA into a decentralized cryptocurrency is what has caused mayhem with you, within the IOTA Foundation. And, the only thing that is known for sure is that the individuals in control of IOTA have failed to give up their centralized power. Ultimately, it was revealed that the IOTA co-founders were fighting over 65 million IOTA worth over $20 million that early IOTA investors failed to claim. Basically, these are other people's tokens. The IOTA co-founders took them after an arbitrary amount of time passed and the investors didn't claim their tokens and now the tokens are worth a ton of money so the co-founders are fighting each other over it. Fucking typical. Let's see. Uh, 
WXOU says full meltdown at IOTA. David versus I- IOTA has not the foundation. Just kept all the uncl- unclaimed IOTA tokens. 65 ti-, uh, TI. IOTA Strong just keeps on giving. <laughs> Wonderful. The IOTA community is apparently quite upset over this because. 5% of the total, the IOTA supply has already been donated to the IOTA Foundation, and it was not disclosed that the IOTA co-founders took 65 million IOTA on top of that. Beyond that, the main problem with the IOTA co-founders fighting each other is that the IOTA network can be centrally controlled via the coordinator, and it is not out of the realm of possibility that something could go wrong if the people who developed the network are battling each other. This is just speculation, but the IOTA wallet hack and network shutdown are occurring less than two weeks after an all-out battle between the co-founders broke out publicly, and it seems possible that this is not a coincidence. Regardless of what is going on between the co-founders, IOTA's coordinator mechanism causes the network to be overly centralized, both in the sense that it is a single point of failure and that the IOTA Foundation can shut down the network and ignore specific transactions at will. Further, the IOTA Trinity Wallet apparently lacks cryptographic security. Due to this unreasonable degree of centralization and risk, crypto investors should probably avoid IOTA at least until the coordinator is removed and the network becomes decentralized, if that ever happens. That was a very good article. Let me see if there's any... There's no comments? Bummer. <clears throat> yeah, very, very dangerous. Very, very dangerous indeed. You know, this is... It, it was laid out for us right here on the, on the end there that uh, these central points of failure, and, and there's multiple in there, you know, it's not just the software itself that's compromisable. It's the people involved in writing the software or, or tending the coordinator that are also central points of failure. So, yeah, uh, this is... I'm going to go to the... Uh, there's I guess there's a blogs, blog article in here. Because I'm really wanting to understand as much as we can on this. Uh, let's see. The coordinator to be confirmed. I, uh, nah. I'm trying to find this thing. Uh, notably, just on the shutdown coordinator. 25 million iota. Blah, blah, blah. Ah, a long letter. Oh, bite me. Letter to the iota community. To whom it may concern, don't be concerned. And this is by uh, David Sunstebo, and it was authored February 3rd, so not all that long ago. By now, most readers are aware of last night's circus and CFB's bewildering, petulant actions. Years ago, I'd interpret this nonsense as an invitation to respond in the same vein. However, that was many lifetimes ago, and... That was many lifetimes ago. At this juncture, I'm merely disappointed, accept this as another life lesson, and move on unperturbed. Equanimity of mind is more valuable to me than a transient dopamine surge from petty vengeance. While the IOTA community certainly has every right to feel let down and angered by CFB's actions, I encourage you all to rather to rather channel that energy into something more conducive towards IOTA's vision. Adhering to the timeless adv- adage of the internet, don't feed the troll, is the best approach here. There is too much exciting development in IOTA to let this distract from our mission and vision. What follows is the promised letter of the IOTA community that elucidates the many surprising turns of events that have unfolded. Despite last night's dramatic events, I elect not to make any significant changes to the letter. Prologue 
<clears throat> Over the past months, in fact, most of a almost a, a whole year, survey Ivan Cheglo, aka Come From Beyond CFB. I will refer to him as CFB th- throughout this post, as this is his preference. Grew increasingly frustrated with the direction of the IOTA Foundation and the IOTA Project itself. This followed the infamous board drama and his subsequent failure to lead the Omega Software Engineering Team, over which he had free reign to achieve his version of a coordinator-free IOTA. His efforts were in parallel with to our research team, fleshing out our own approach to Coordicide. Ultimately, his inability to deliver led his decision to quit the IOTA Foundation to focus on his private VR slash MMO startup um, Paracosm. But regardless, he kept insisting on having a final say in IOTA's architecture to suit his company's needs. This, despite no longer contributing to the project, having divested all of his IOTAs and declaring so publicly. In this post, I will attempt to chronicle the most pertinent points of the Jin slash IOTA saga from inception until today, as well as providing a glimpse into the future. So let's start at the beginning. An unlikely partnership. At the end of 2013, while crypto was still very much in its infancy, the NXT project was released and quickly garnered a healthy following. It was the first full proof-of-stake blockchain and one of the first projects to feature an asset exchange, voting, aliases, etc. on the blockchain. <clears throat> in many ways, NXT was a fertile breeding ground and prototype for several of the current projects in this space. Long before I, I convinced CFP to reveal that he was the infamous BC Next, he used his alias to state that NXT was a mere experiment to him, whereas I approach it from the perspective of what problems the technology could solve in the real world. This would also be a place where we met Sergei Popov and Dominic Sh- Sh- Shiner. At the very beginning of our relationship, I and CFB usually disagreed on most topics, whether it was his idea that Einstein was wrong about relativity, his belief in near-death experiences, or more concrete topics such as my stance on the exorbitant fees on remittances were amoral and something DLT could be a solution to. However, as we kept talking, we developed a healthy respect for each other's different perspectives and talents. One fateful day, I would casually tell him about a hobbyist VR project me and my cousin had tinkered with a few years earlier, which we called Induced Reality. It was at this point he would tell me about his background as a game developer and his education in electrical engineering, as well as his life goal of creating the quote perfect VR MMO which would require novel technology. While this was certainly intriguing, my primary focus was on the, at the time, nascent field of edge computing. Miscomputing as I called it before fog computing became the norm. However, the back-end technology required for VR MMO with low latency and high performance overlapped on several areas with my vision of the Internet of Things where sensors compute data on the edge. To make a long story short, Gin Labs was born and the blueprint of IOTA started to emerge. Unorthodoxy is the new orthodox. Despite what some people think, the goal of Jin was not to push ter- push ternary for the sake of ternary, but to go beyond legacy computation to accommodate for the ever-increasing demand in both sheer quantity as well as the variability of computation. 
now known in the semiconductor industry as the more than more paradigm shift. Hmm, I have to look at that. With this, we also made the, at the time, unorthodox decision to go beyond the von Neumann architecture, implement asynchronous circuitry, and develop a data flow polymorphic computing architecture. While we were under no illusion that this would be an easy undertaking, but deemed it absolutely necessary to realize our respective visions of the future. Since then, IBM's True North, Intel's Loihi, Zelenix ACAP, and a plethora of other cutting-edge projects have validated different portions of our vision and decisions. As our unofficial slogan has always been, software drives hardware. Unlike the titan multi-billion dollar companies through back in two th- though back in 2014 when we started, the Jim Project funding for new semiconductors was at an all-time low, but we didn't mind. We knew we were on to something and were going to pursue it. We hired out our first electrical engineers and went through the usual startup hustle, including the hatred of all things, even peripherally crypto-related, by banks, which led to frozen bank accounts, delayed salaries, etc. Good memories, slash sarcasm. Is Ternary the future? Yes, no, maybe. We knew from day one that Ternary would incur a performance debt in the short to medium term, just as we knew that spearheading quantum robustness in DLT would also incur a performance penalty. And, just as us taking the quantum thread seriously, a lot of people ridiculed it for being sci-fi. Now, years later, every honest person accepts that we were right to be concerned about it. As for ternary, the answer lies in the future. So let's flesh out this point a little further. Ever since the beginning, we wanted to find a way to make IOTA radix neutral, i.e. allowing for both binary and trinary, just as we wanted to make the quantum resistance signature scheme optional. Still, we had very limited resources, and so we had to prioritize realizing the whole vision. Now, years later, with a lot more resources, we are going to implement signature operationality on Chris, in Chrysalis, which will lead to significant performance improvements. And, for the time being, we are implementing binary for the same reasons. Does this mean IOTA is forever abandoning ternary? No. But, we accept that right now. With With Oh, I'm sorry, but we know, but we accept that right now, with IOTA being the leading contender to become a standardized DLT protocol for IoT and beyond, it is the right thing to do. With that being said, to those that think ternary, like quantum computing, is science fiction, here is some stimulating reading material for you. Exhibit A, B, C, D, and I could go on and on. IOTA. <clears throat> As our backgrounds were in dis- distributed ledger technology, we naturally contemplated how to, incentivi- how to incentivize and secure a vision of a globally distributed computing network. This evolved to become the, the machine economy and data integrity layer vision of the Tangle and IOTA. Around the same time, Sergei Popov who had authored the first academic paper on proof-of-stake, was tinkering with the idea of using a directed acyclic graph, DAG. We picked up on this and hired him into Gen Labs to work on this DLT project, which became IOTA. Simultaneously, I had already been working with Dominic Shearer, a shiner, on a myriad of projects. Exchange, DID, Tipping, supply chain, decentralized Wikipedia at the same time or at the time. His hunger for building an arch and achieving reminded me of myself a few years earlier, and his talents and drive were obvious. So I brought him into the project. 
Now we had a founding team, a blueprint, and a vision. We announced the project in late 2015 and had held the crowd fund. Approximately 500,000 USD was raised from a little over 1,000 people, a modest sum in comparison to the ludicrous amounts of money raised, wasted, in the ICO age of 2017, but back in 2015 that was sufficient for us to hire a few more crucial people and build out on the first iteration of IOTA. <clears throat> Let me get a sip of water here. It's getting a little dry. The next chapters of the IOTA story are quite well known to the vast majority of reading this, so I won't repeat them. Instead, I'll focus on CFB suddenly chose to go against the direction of the IOTA Foundation and why this letter was penned. Spoon feeding logic to a fork. As IOTA kept progressing, CFB kept distancing himself from the project while simultaneously becoming more erratic and irrational. For every improvement to the protocol we made, he would reject it out of hand, refuse to review it properly, talk with engineers, or explain it. In addition to trolling and spreading nonsense in his own per in his own paracosm discord, he now started threatening the IOTA Foundation actively repeatedly stating that if we hadn't just accepted his magical solution, which he never properly described or delivered, he would fork IOTA. Not only would he fork IOTA, but he would also sue the IOTA Foundation and insist that his fork was the real IOTA and that he would pursue legal action to secure the IOTA brand. Ironically, as most have come to learn, CFB's brand is legal threats and actions when he doesn't get what he wants. The brand which I single-handedly conceived, I dismissed a lot of this as CFB being CFB and tried to reason with him and explain the strategy to make him understand that no one was abandoning the real vision. Hell, it's our collective vision. Despite months of effort, all of these attempts at avoiding drama fell on deaf ears. In retrospect, at least it brought sufficient time, or it bought sufficient time rather, to prove that the IOTA Foundation was delivering software, research, and adoption at an ever accelerating rate while he was not doing anything. So the inevitable happened. He was no longer listening to his partner concerning our business nor any of his co-founders of IOTA, we'd, we would have to part ways. I give him all Gen IP, engineers, advisors, brand, whatever, and we'd split Gen Lab's token assets on the respective networks. He gets a, his portion of the tokens on his fork, which I will call Triota until he comes with a better name, while I keep mine on the network he has denounced divested from and gone to war against. A very fair deal for him. Legally, I could pursue everything due to the current sh shareholding structure, but unlike him, I am not petty. I wanted him to succeed on his own while IOTA continues to thrive. The latter part of, this, of the last sentence is probably why he panicked and went full incoherent rambling madman yesterday and made his most loyal ally his enemy out of nowhere. Ever since CFB's departure, IOTA has just continued to grow and made great strides in all, resp uh, all aspects. And suddenly he wants to own it again. Naturally, that will never happen. <clears throat> A final personal note. Since the seed of Jin and IOTA entered the soil, I have worked non-stop to ensure the success of our vision. Despite a series of trials and tribulations in my family, I have taken no time off. I kept going non-stop. I took my first time off in the summer of 2019 to avoid a complete burnout, a total of two weeks vacation for over six plus years. I know my story is mirrored by several other people who are working around the clock 
to ensure IOTA's success. Meanwhile, CFB liquidated his IOTAs, became a wealthy man, traveled the world, and focused squarely on his company, Paracosm. He would also seldom have time to discuss strategy or review anything anymore. He still hasn't read the Corodicide solution we laid out 10 months ago. He rejects it because it's not his solution. In his mind, he is magically entitled to decide over a project he quit and no longer contributes to, has attempted to sabotage, and declared war against. Despite this, I have always defended him even when he was acting in a manner that was detrimental to IOTA and ensured that our co-founded company had a viable path to market through IOTA's success. Up until just a week ago, I was still trying to talk sense to him, to no avail. He betray His betrayal and selfish behavior is not something I accept in my life. I know a lot of people will continue to ask me, about, ask me questions about him, but please respect that I am removing him entirely from my private and professional life, and will not entertain his trolling for one second. I will not engage in ad hominem attacks on him and ignore all attempts at hating me into expressing fur oh, I'm sorry, at baiting me into expressing further sentiments about him. I wish him good luck with his paracosm and gin, and that's that. This letter is my catharsis and final word on this entire debacle. As this nightmare has finally reached its apex, I no longer have to carry this burden on my shoulders. I am feeling rejuvenated as I can focus solely on matters that excite me and are productive for our collective vision. IOTA has never been in a better position than right now with today's release of Go Shimmer. Go Shimmer. Uh, we are beginning the exciting journey to deliver the solution to the DLT trilemma, and with Chrysalis, we are going to see significant improvements to the performance and usability of the network, allowing users to deploy solutions on the network at an exponential rate. The sheer amount of organic adoption happening at the moment is riveting. The best chapters of IOTA are still to come. Hmm. Well, let's see what the responses are, because I'm sure this was written way before this hack. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, Becky Walter... Janopoulos says it's very difficult to remove a toxic manipulative or narcissistic person from your life that's a hard road to walk but the energy you put into that relationship will be put to better use for sure let's see Brit Agency says I'm glad to hear you will take the high road I don't think anyone cares for drama at this point we are done with it yeah I, I think so too. Oh, let's see. Kale Cre Creedy said, uh, "Sounds good. We have been, we have all been there sometime in our life. I know how he thinks. When he realizes his mistakes, he will have the rest of his life to regret." That's true. Let's see. Istvan Fintas says, "Best wishes to you, David. Your earlier tech, your to your earlier tech leader and to Iota also." Very good. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to see if there's any that have... Nope. Unfortunately, nobody has commented since the hack. Um, but yeah, I, I do want to get further into this because apparently there was a significant hack since then. I guess this was all like uh, February 3rd when this thing was authored. But here we are on... Um, on February 14th and uh, I've got an article from the 13th and that's where we're gonna start on the other side of the music break but for now let's go ahead and throw back down into some music and as far as where to go hmm well I'm liking the clutch plane right now let's go with escape from the prison planet here on coin metal And that was Rivers of Nile with a home. 
So, as far as what we're going to get into next, got to kind of hunt it down here. Got too many damn browser windows. Anyway, got that one taken care of. Got that one taken care of. Uh huh. So this is where we are going next. And that last one was a little bit longer than I'd anticipated, but it was certainly detailed enough to kind of give us a picture here. Although the prefacing article that we had covered seemed to indicate there's 65 million early adopter coins that the founders of IOTA have apparently taken custody of and are having trouble kind of figuring out how to divvy it up among themselves. Now, I could, I will say that such a thing being manufactured and kind of played out is, is not beyond expectation in crypto. It's happened before where one founder wants to break off from the project and there is some boodle of pre-mined or otherwise acquired, ill-acquired Ill acquired funds um, in question as to who gets custody of it, right? And so they, they manufacture a hack, get access to the funds, liquidate the funds, everybody gets their cut of the funds, and the founder that wants out gets out, everybody happy. <clears throat> It's happened before, you know, and the fact that I could summarize it in what would what would be the equivalent of about two paragraphs worth of material kind of tells you how predictable this kind of shit is. It's yet another hazard of centralization in all of these, <clears throat> all of these uh, DPOS projects, um, I expect them to have the same thing, you know, where they have delegated proof of stake. Anytime you concentrate the the interest holders down that tightly, you know, to that small an entity, you run into issues. And that's just how they're it, how cryptocurrency is. It's the nature of the beast. It gets better with more people being involved in it. So anyway, I got this article here. It's on uh, Cointelegraph, and uh, maybe it'll lend a little bit more information that might fill out our thesis a little bit here as to what happened with IOTA. And uh, this is on Cointelegraph. It's by Benjamin Pierce. So yes, penis. And uh, this is authored February 13th, 2020. IOTA Foundation investigates funds allegedly stolen from Trinity Wallets. The IOTA Foundation has put out a warning regarding IOTA, MIOTA, Coin Wallet Trinity, and its association with stolen funds. After mul multiple IOTA holders reported missing coins, the IOTA Foundation announced the suspension of its network node called the Coordinator while the entity explores the situation. A February 13th IOTA status update said, IOTA runs on the Tangle, not blockchain. A major player in the 2017 bull run, IOTA stood out as one of the few cryptocurrencies not on a blockchain. The asset runs on the Tangle using directed acyclic graph technology, or DAG for short. For short. IOTA's foundation runs the coordinator, a node on the network to help prevent attacks. Although the network still apparently relies on the coordinator, the IOTA foundation posted a discussion on the node's elimination in a 2018 blog post. The asset's Trinity wallet causes issues. Last summer, the IOTA foundation released Trinity, a new wallet for IOTA storage. On February 12, 2020, an IOTA status update urged users not to open their Trinity wallets for the time being, citing multiple reported accounts of stolen IOTA. 
The next day, after looking into the issue, the IOTA Foundation said thieves likely obtained victims' private, key, private wallet keys. The foundation noted approximately 10 cases of reported theft, which all involved Trinity wallet usage. Network transaction research also indicates only roughly 50% of victims have reported cases to the foundation at the time of the announcement. Quote, we'll share a full transparent report of all events once this has concluded. For now, we'll limit the information we share to not, to not give provide the attackers with any additional insights, the update said, adding that the data thus far still is not fully decisive. This is not the first bout of trouble IOTA has seen since 2017. The network has seen multiple functional problems, including a 24-hour mainnet shutdown in December of 2019. Cointelegraph reached out to the IOTA Foundation for additional details, but received no response as of press time. This article will be updated accordingly, should a response come in. Let me see if there's any comments on that. No, of course not. So yeah, there you have it. A little bit more. Apparently this is inflicting more than um, just one set of wallets, though. And so, uh, yeah. The <laughs> Still, it's terribly dangerous that one entity can shut, and shut down the whole thing. Um, but I, I have more on that right here. And uh, this one's on uh, CryptoNews.com. And this is by Saeed Fedelpasek. Hmm. Fedelpasek. So, yes. Penis. And uh, this is authored uh, February 14th, 2020. Hacked IOTA on pause during its investigation. Miota down 2%. Oopsie. Things took a, down for, a downturn for IOTA. Miota, as the network has been paused while its team is focusing on developing situ on the developing situation of the hacked Trinity wallet. IOTA seems to be going through an es an escalation of events. When this in incident was first reported on on February twelfth, IOTA advised people to keep their Trinity wallet, a software wallet developed by the o IOTA Foundation closed for the time being as a precaution, as there have been several reports of stolen funds. Just 25 minutes later, the coordinator, a node run by the IOTA Foundation for Network Protection and Transfer Com Transaction Confirmation, was reported as turned off in order to prevent further thefts while the investigation continues. The following day has seen the IOTA Foundation reassuring the users that, quote, all relevant resources have been focused on the investigation and that work is being done with the identified victims to ascertain both the cause and the impact of the incident. They have concluded, based on the available evidence at the time, that this is indeed a theft of the funds adding that there are, quote, around 10 victims so far identified, all of whom seem to be Trinity Wallet users. Quote, we can't rule out other scenarios. The found information is not conclusive, said the Post, adding that, transparent report, that a transparent report will be shared with the public. Multiple possible root causes are still being investigated, including the possibility that a previous Trinity version has been exploited and is also quite likely that there are details that can't be shared yet if it concerns a vulnerability, as others may attempt to exploit it. So far, the Foundation reported that, number one, they've been investigating attacked seeds and analyzing the attack pattern. Number two, several cyber forensic expert ha experts have joined the investigation to scan the wallet's dependencies and affected systems. Number three, first exchanges, not all of them, reported that no, no monitored funds have been transferred or liquidated. 
Number four, data transactions are not affected. Number five, uh, status.iota.org has been established with, to, to have all information in one place, showing currently that the, the DevNet is operational while the mainnet is not. Furthermore, the law enforcement has been involved in the investigation as well. Uh, quote, Currently, IOTA is working with law enforcement and cybersecurity experts to investigate a coordinated attack resulting in stolen funds. To protect users, we have paused the coordinator and advise users not to open the Trinity or open Trinity until further notice. And while all of this has been happening, the 23rd coin by market capitalization Miota dropped 9% on February 13th before recovering somewhat. At pixel time 1053 UTC, Miota trades at 32 cents US dollar in US dollars and is down almost 2% in the past 24 hours and 3% in a week, trimming its monthly gains to 45%. Back in December, uh, IOTA foresaw a quote bright 2020 for itself, which was to be achieved through its action plan that included cordicide or the death of the coordinator for the for the sake of decentralization. Just recently, their developer team published an update stating that they were going full steam ahead with the upgrades that ex that they expected to be visible before and after cordicide and were equally enthusiastic about finalizing the Trinity V1 feature set. Their plan was to sign off on Trinity V1, only maintaining it while focusing on developing Trinity V2. Also, as reported this week, the IOTA Foundation said, oh, I'm sorry, the IOTA Foundation and Eclipse Foundation, an open source software foundation for commercial innovation and collaboration, announced the launch of the Tangle EE Working Group, WG, that unites companies and academics in developing IOTA-based data and payment solutions for commercial use. Dell Technologies and STMI ST Microelectronics are among the founding members of the new working group, along with 13 other member organizations. Meanwhile, commenters have been continuously asking for more information on the theft, and there were many op many opinions offered, among which only that desktop users were affected, that Trinity is a beta version, as well as, quote, wrecked and exit scam. <laughs> a German nonprofit with 100 plus employees performing an exit scam wouldn't happen, though, and that was by. Um, Space Crook, <laughs> February 13th, 2020. On the other hand, there are many supporters currently praising the IOTA Foundation for their transparency. But there are also many of those who wondered how many people use the network if nobody noticed that there's a theft in progress. And, of those who are questioning IOTA's decentralization, if it can all be switched off so easily... Uh, quote, IOTA is so decentralized and distributed that they can literally turn it off. And that was by Super, Super Teak Boys, um, February 13th. Uh, next one is, quote, wasn't the bad part. The bad part was no one noticed. It's not even being used. And it's a decent, and it's decently high cap. Really lifts the veneer off this facade. And that was by Crypto Gains. Meanwhile, this isn't the first time that hackers a target, a targeted the network and succeeding in breaking its walls on an ongoing basis, so they say. Over the course of 2018, a hacker had stolen 11.4 million US dollars worth of Miota from 85 individuals. This man, the man was arrested in January 2019, while IOTA co-founder Danik Shiner claimed that the majority of stolen funds had already been found. <laughs> yeah. So, 
it does it does kind of draw into question you know the the utility of it that so few people are actually using it that it take that it took that long for people to notice that their funds were being stolen however um i i i'd be willing to bet that this is something internal um that's usually the first place to look and as they are having some issues between their between their founders who else would know how to best attack the network but one of the developers so yeah that that double paints the developers a potential risk possibility hold on a moment here Boy, jiu-jitsu is thirsty business, but we're not quite done with this one yet, I don't think. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, here we go. And uh, this is on uh, news.bitcoin.com. Uh, it was authored February 15th, 2020, which is kind of funny. And uh, this is by Jamie Redman, and it was authored approximately seven hours ago. IOTA network still down, how the next Bitcoin killer screeched to a halt. On February 13th, the IOTA network came to a screeching halt, and the IOTA Foundation reports that $1.6 million worth of the native currency was stolen. The following day, the IOTA network status page still shows that the mainnet is, quote, not operational, and the development team has found an exploit related to the Trinity wallets. Hmm. The IOTA network is a hot topic within the cryptocurrency community right now, with people discussing the network's recent outage. At the time of publication, IOTA's network st status page says, quote, main net, oh, let's see, 1,341,599, not operational, TPS 0 0.6500. Alongside this message are multiple status updates from the core development team. At first, the team heard several reports of theft and decided to warn people using Discord and Twitter. Well, that's definitely the right thing to do. The developers also said, as a precaution, we ask you to keep your Trinity wallet closed for now. Following the initial investigation, IOTA programmers decided to turn off the quote coordinator to make sure that no th further theft can occur until we find out the root cause of these thefts. Since the initial announcements, the topic has been trending among the crypto community across social media. The team also warned the community on Twitter and explained that law enforcement were involved. The official IOTA Twitter account stated, quote, Currently, IOTA is working with law enforcement and cybersecurity experts to investigate a coordinated attack resulting in stolen funds. Prote to protect users, we have paused the coordinator and advised users not to open Trinity until further notice. Let me check something here. Oh, it's just a really long blank song get rid of that thing maybe hopefully I didn't just break my program here there we go all right find something else there we go okay despite this message the Twitter account has still a pinned Twitter post that explains the Trinity wallet is quote secure after the warning tweet and update message that disclosed the team shut off the IOTA coordinator many people on Twitter asked what they meant by the phrase, quote, pause the coordinator. Commenter Eric Wall discussed the IOTA fiasco on Twitter where he's well known for calling out the vulnerabilities tied to the IOTA network. Wall stated, quote, a question that keeps coming up at night. Is it possible to create a rubbish coin based on an advanced bullshit, build a community of misguided fans nevertheless, run it centralized for five years, hard fork, copy the design of a real working project, keep the community, and become a success? Quote, 
This is very bad news. What's going to happen to all the Bosch control systems that IOTA is, that IOTA is powering? Think of all the Volkswagen vehicles that can no longer operate because the entire network is shut down. This is worse than Y2K. I'm going to my bunker to prep for doomsday. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Um, refrain from questioning community moderators. IOTA team is developing a mitigation strategy. IOTA developers noted another update to the IOTA Foundation has been working around the clock to investigate the matter. Quote, most evidence is pointing towards seed theft, cause still unknown and under investigation, the IOTA status page noted. Quote, victims, around 10 that identified with the IOTA Foundation so far, all seem to, be, to have recently used Trinity, the developers added. And then laughing my ass off. On February 14th, the IOTA team gave public uh, gave the public another update which said they had found another uh, the exploit and one I, I'm sorry and are now working on resolving the issue IOTA engineers insisted that the exploit was definitely related to Trinity wallet and stressed quote the IOTA core protocol is as already communicated before not breached IOTA team members further disclosed quote we know that you would like to understand more details, but ask you to refrain from questions toward the community moderators due to the parallel ongoing co-action with law enforcement. The teams are currently developing a mitigation strategy. We will share all details about the exploit in due time and, of course, publish a complete incident analysis as well. The discussion regarding IOTA's lack of decentralization is at the heart of the conversations on social media. The leadership at IOTA seems to be extremely fragile according to a recent I'm sorry, my apologies sir, a recent blog post and the chain stopped working for fifteen hours during the last week of December twenty nineteen as well. Despite all the craziness surrounding the IOTA project, the market is remain, has remained the 21st largest blockchain by market capitalization. IOTA has gained 1% this week, despite the paused coordinator. What do you think about the issues with IOTA during the last 24 hours? Let us know in the comments below. Now let me see if there are any. It doesn't seem to be... Nope. No comments. Uh, yeah, that's pretty damning, really. I mean that they they had this kind of issue going on, but I I think I had I had read their white paper um, at one point or another, and I I'm pretty sure it's if I did read their white paper, it is up on my um on my YouTube channel, so you might want to check that out and see see what my verdict was then. I'm sure it wasn't very good. You know, especially with the idea of a, a centralized node that's controlling everything, that's confirming all the transactions, that's why you have miners. It's supposed to keep you from having these kind of issues, to have miners that are properly incentivized to mine your currency. Again, you, you cannot break the incentive, the incentive model of, of Bitcoin and fuck around with it like this and expect that it's going to stay decentralized or that it's going to work as intended. Just can't do it. But they're not the only people that are doing things with their projects that would seem to threaten the decentralization of them. <clears throat> and I got this article here. It's on uh, medium.com. Get rid of this little pop up here. Steam it joining Tron ecosystem. And this is by the Tron Foundation, uh, February 14th, 2020. Steam it Inc., the largest decentralized blockchain based social media and blogging platform, announced a strategic partnership with Tron Foundation. 
Tron and Steemit's development teams will immediately begin working together to bring Steemit and other Steam blockchain-based dApps to Tron blockchain and its community of over 20 million users, products, and services. Tron is one of the largest decentralized ecosystems providing fast network speed, high throughput, uh, high throughput stability, and scalability. The partnership continues to beat, um, to beat of Tron's rhythm in partnership with top firms like Samsung, Poloniex, Opera, and DLive to provide a dynamic value proposition to its users, investors, and community members. Steemit is offering a Reddit-alike service built on top of the Steam blockchain. As one of the largest apps across all block, um, across all, I'm sorry, they wrote this terribly. As one of the largest apps across all blockchains, Steemit also claims a thriving community of its own due to a growing number of dApps developed on the Steam blockchain with over 1 million users. <clears throat> Some popular real-world use cases on the Steam blockchain include the YouTube alternative DTube, Instagram alternative Apex, and fitness dApp Actifit. Steamit was founded by Ned Scott and Dan Larimer in January of 2016. Larimer had the Larimer led the engineering of Steamit's earliest technology and later went on to lead the development of EOS, a highly visible blockchain protocol. Together, Tron Foundation and Steemit Inc. will look to create further value from their users, or I'm sorry, for their users, rather, and to augment their, their advancements in decentralized technologies, including moving old Steam tokens to a new Tron-based Steam token giveaways to the existing TRX users with the new Tron-based Tron Steam token, as well as a new accelerator program towards the developer community. This partnership further empowers Tron's title as the blockchain industry's leader in distributed ledger technology, with over 800 dApps now in its ecosystem. Quote, we are very excited to welcome Steemit into the Tron ecosystem, says Justin Sun, founder of Tron and CEO of BitTorrent. Together, we will usher in a new era of decentralized social networking. Steemit is the original conception of forums, meeting cryptocurrency to achieve. I'm sorry, meeting cryptocurrency to achieve mass adoption where cryptocurrency could be distributed as easily as likes and upvotes, and this highly powered distribution mechanism would bring adoption and appreciation to the currency and social network, says Ned Scott, former CEO, chairman, and founder of Steemit. Quote, from launching the platform in 2016 on a shoestring budget today, I've enjoyed the, em, enjoyed the development of the platform and the growth of its user base. Now I'm excited to see a strategic partner attempt to bring it to new heights. About Tron Foundation. Tron is dedicated to accelerating and, decent, and the decentralization of the internet through blockchain technology and decentralized applications. Founded in September 2017 by Justin Sun, the company has devised a series of achievements including mainnet launch on May 2018, network independence on June 2018, and Tron Virtual Machine launched on August 2018. July 2018 also marked the acquisition of BitTorrent, a pioneer in decentralized services boasting approximately 100 million active monthly users. You can learn more about Tron on our website, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, um, oh, and there's comments. Let's see what the responses are on this thing. Uh, let's see here. Um, Juan Perez, you can buy Steemit, but you can't buy a blockchain. Steemit is not, or Steam is not Steemit. <laughs> uh, Crystal Human says, what, no Steemit post? 
<laughs> um, Ron says, I have a feeling that Justin will kill Steam it. Probably. Uh, John Cogswell says, what will happen to t- to Steam holders? <laughs> That's a really good question, dude. Ricky Ricks says, "I have a, I have the feeling that 2020 will be gr- a great years a great year for TRX holders. Uh, maybe uh, you never know. It could happen. Um, personally, I see this as <clears throat> kind of alarming, and I say that because there's been this this trend with with uh, Tron and uh, Justin Sun specifically that it seems like." They're trying to go the route of like Apple or Microsoft or one of these other entities that kind of made their their money not only from their initial project, but in order to sustain the, the quote unquote value of their project, they have to go around and acqu- you know, acquire other projects that have quote unquote value. Personally, I think this is going to be a raw deal. That if people that were on Steam wanted to be on another project, on Tron, uh, they they would be using Tron instead for what they're doing. But no, they're they're using Steam. It. So yeah, it, I think that people trying to screw the choice of their users in this way, you know, it's again it's a danger of centralization and ownership and involvement of a quote-unquote company or foundation that's making these big decisions for for a cryptocurrency project is that it could just as easily be acquired and you're you're part of the asset at that point you know that's being transferred fortunately you can actually sell out of them first anyway let's go ahead and throw back down into some music and let's see what haven't we played yet you know, we haven't played any sixth. I, I think it's necessary. Here it is. Century of the Narcissist. Here on Coin Metal. And that was Cavalier Conspiracy with Hex. <clears throat> Pardon me. Hex. And so, it is with that that I'd like to draw this episode to a close. Thank you very much for listening. I certainly do appreciate the support. Uh, We will be back again on Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And so until then, I want y'all to trade safe. Do your homework. And watch out for your own bunghole because nobody else is going to do it for you. Not even the IOTA Foundation. And so it is with that. let's Let's find us the last dance. Because, you know, as usual, haven't haven't selected anything, so I kind of like to leave my options open until the very last moment. Um, but let's see, I think... No, no, I don't have time for that one. Damn it, Jim. Let's go for this one. Corrosion of Conformity. Dance of the Dead. Last Dance here on Coin Metal. Thank you again for listening, and you all have an excellent weekend. Good night.